Hello once again, this is Grimdark13, picking up right where we left off in Featherbend to Chapter 3. Last time we talked to, uh, we went through John's nest, Riska's nest, and we are talking to Rose Lalonde right now, and she is purple, purple, purple. Yo, have you read my paper yet? Uh, the editorial. Five page handwritten editorial tacked to the town bulletin board <laughs> regarding the poorly <laughs> undertone of latent bestiality in classic Lechwine literature. Wow. In which case, I definitely have not. <laughs> <laughs> of course. This recent issue seems more passionate than the others. Can I simply assume your next musical project will be lyrically focused on dismantling preconceived notions of our hooved quadrupedal friends? So, he's hating on horses. What? <laughs> I'm asking if you're going to rap about this. <laughs> what? No! <laughs> Unstraddled back, lean and bare. Mane of majestic dark and dare. Um, Holy shit. That's creepy. Ride hard into the shadows. Deep, whilst echoed clopping haunts your sleep. Uh, this isn't kind of creepy. Stop. Yeah. Flank tells stories of happiness and not. I'm <laughs> behind and watch for the plot. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> At least I don't spend my time chasing after beasts that don't exist. Horses don't exist? You know your shit's rubbed off on Jade, right? She went from lab-dwelling, scientific entrepreneur, to freaky technological wild child. Tarzan punk, cybernaturalist, whatever the hell you want to call it. <laughs> cybernaturalist actually, actually sounds interesting. Just because the beasts aren't easily seen, that doesn't mean they don't exist. But I have a feeling you already know that. What did she tell you? All about what happened last week with you two. When you ran off, she naturally came to me for answers. I lent her my advice. What we heard that night should be left alone. What? And that is your choice. What she's doing now is hers. What did they... <sighs> okay. And the last episode, they also questioned the legitimacy... Let's question the legitimacy of Rose's trade. A.K.A. basket smuggling. If we aren't running a smuggling <laughs> ring, why is it that you only create shit outside of strata territory? My location has absolutely nothing to do with baskets. <laughs> I simply find it easier to concentrate out here. Far from society? Yeah, that's... I would like to live far from society. It'd be nice. Closer to home. Home? Lalonde, that is the ocean. Do you still have that fetish for zoologically dubious sea creatures? Is this something we're gonna have to dedicate some time to? I'm s thinking that Rose is from across the sea. Speaking of completely whacked up fascinations with eldritch abominations of the deep, you've really gotta stop lending your observation notes to John. You're making Eggbird start to crack. What? How so? I don't know. He's been acting weird lately. It's kind of freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, if I find him in the middle of the night, naked, with a vacuum and a headlight, looking for paranormal shit, I'm blaming yeah, you. I don't want to think about that. He hasn't attempted to locate anything of a paranormal nature since he was 13. Ensuring we were safe on the ghost-busting front was the main reason I began lending him my field notes in the first place. To serve as a sort of vice for his exploratory fantasies. And then he gave you your first weaving kit. I've heard this story before. I don't see anything strange about his behavior at all. Yeah, but your definition of strange and my definition of strange have this nasty little habit of being polar goddamn opposites. <laughs> He's acting weird with a capital what the fuck. He's psychotically cheerful. He's giving out high-end baskets to quote-unquote a friend. He runs off without a word three times a week in the middle of the night. Oh my god. He'd be fucking... He'd be fucking... I trust you just realized something. The real question is, why didn't I realize it before? Muse, I'm stupid. Your being stupid has nothing to do with this. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> very funny. All right. We leave now. See you later, Lalonde. Have a good day, Strider. And I'm gonna go to Riska's nest, see if the final dialogue is opened up. Welcome in there. back, Strider. 
no, it's not. I'm out. Later. So, it's off to John's we go. Uh, once again, he is humming quietly. Hey, when Dave. I what? Um. Why does it always say politely for these ones? All right, here we go. So this friend of yours, he come with benefits. Oh my! Just comes out and. What? <laughs> what I'm asking is, do you or do you not vulcanize meat rockets? Like, do you retrofit the pudding hatch? Oh my! <laughs> That's a new way to put it. What? <laughs> do you guys clam dive? Do wheel? Cross scissors? Smoke sausages? Think with portals? Oh. Churn each other's butter, tightly <laughs> pack your suitcases, put round pegs in slightly smaller round holes, put your mouths straight onto each other's white chocolate fountains, figure out what the extra settings on the shower head are for, pretend to be hand puppets. Um... Please feel free to add more. <laughs> no! <laughs> okay! Do you want to? <laughs> I am not going to dignify that question with a response. Alright, it's cool if you don't feel like sharing. Personally, I don't care if you put from the rough. You're my friend, and I love you. <laughs> but from the... You're making, like, half of these euphemisms up. That isn't even the reason I'm stuck deciding between him and Briska. Why don't you just, I don't know, bring him along mm, to Briska's thing? That would not be a thing. good idea. Best case scenario, you introduce him to Circuit and smooth things out. Worst case scenario, well, I'll be drunk for worst case scenario, so I don't really give a shit. That would have... That would be how I would be in Unfortunately, this Unfortunately, there's a bunch of reasons why that would work. Man, here I was getting all excited over some pre-dinner entertainment. <laughs> Look, I can't make up your mind for you. But between you and me, what I can do is tell you Circuit's the one who wanted me to come down here and ask if you're still down to party. She was? Mm-hmm. Man, you should have seen her. Sitting by the windowsill. Taking a bunch of these heavy, wistful sighs, staring wide-eyed and forlorn out the window, waiting for her friends to come. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of John Cat in this, but there's also a lot of John Vriska in this as well. Gosh, I sure hope Egbert decides to bless us with his sharp wit, unmatched intelligence, and impeccable fashion sense. The sweep wouldn't be the same without him. <laughs> Uh, this is hilarious. <laughs> of course she said that. I definitely had all of those things. After the fight we had, I didn't think she'd want me around, but... You know what? I made Riska a promise. And I'm going to keep it. Tell her I'll be there. Will do. Okay, and... That is how well, we finish got this shit up. See that's how we finish up John's Nest. Now let's go to Briska's. Welcome back, Strider. Uh, here we go. You can stop getting your poofy pirate pants in a twist. John will be here. Oop, here we go. Relief washes over Briska's face. Good. <laughs> she closes her eyes and rubs her hand over her temple, sighing softly. Good. I guess this is the part where I'm supposed to thank you for all your help, huh? I'm waiting. <laughs> You're gonna be there a while. That's cool. Being able to party with Circuit and Egbert all sweep long is thanks enough. <laughs> Why am I stuck with you instead of your regular host anyway? Polly and I decided against sticking together for the sweep this year. She dumped you? Can you not? Last time she hosted, some shit went down, and we discovered something about the suite we probably shouldn't know anything about. This year, she wanted to investigate it, while I'd rather spend the time pretending I know jack shit. This is about the migration, isn't it? Migration? Kinda. Polly wants to know what exactly is doing the migrate. Figure out what kind of creature it is and study it or something. They're nothing special, just your average run-of-the-mill predators. Snakes, wolves, bears. Heck, I could have told you that. Sure, it's shitty people are sentenced to be killed down there, but I don't know what she hopes to gain by listening in on the slaughter. Don't ask me. I'm not the mad scientist loaded to the primaries with advanced listening gear. 
only reason she got me listening in the first place was because she said, no animal on record follows the migration patterns outlined by the suite, so... Impossible. One of them has to. Dave shrugs with nonchalance. First thing that he says, he says, stop to make eye contact. Strider? What? What is What's it that's down, down there? there? Dave? I should probably get going. I'll see you on the sweep circuit. All right. Dave, what the fuck Just is it? Just don't forget to bring your wine. Wouldn't dream. <sighs> what the fuck is it? All right, we have one last thing to do at Rose's. Talk about the sweep. What do you know about the sweep? I know that it's a seasonal celebration held by members of the understory, the canopy, and the emergent. I know it's tradition to stay indoors for the entire day with your host, your feast, your wine, and your tokens. What is And I know the festival is itself down plays cover to the systematic elimination of all living beings condemned to the forest floor. You know this as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. That's only half of what's bothering me. What the fuck is down there? I need Anyone to know. Anyone who does know about the sweep thinks it's the fault of some predators migrating across the floor. The people are sentenced down there as fodder. Jade told me, and I quote, There is no living animal whose migratory patterns match that specific day of the season and that specific amount of time. Whatever it is hunting people on the floor, it sure as hell ain't wildlife. What are you saying that? they're monsters, Jade? Let's not spend time chasing after beasts that don't exist. I'm not letting Harley investigate this shit on her own. She's gonna get herself killed. She's much more competent than you give her credit for, Strider. Besides, neither of us know her exact position in the strata. It would be unwise to track her down so close to showtime. Something tells me trying to find her will put you in more danger than you are capable of saving her. This is gay strips. She has an illustrated junior bypass. There's a sedative in the wine. What? What? In the wine our generous ruling government gives us every sweep. There's a sedative in it. I've come to the conclusion this makes the mandate of stay indoors much easier to police later in the day. What? Which, I can only assume, is when the screams are the loudest. Damn. How can you be so calm talking about all of this? It's something that's happened right under our noses. Every year, for as long as we can remember. There's not much we can do about it, except collect the information we can without exposing our intentions and landing ourselves in the forest floor with the rest of the condemned. So our hands are completely tied. Until we know the proper nature of the beast? Yes. This is also why I need your help delivering baskets. What? What the hell does what our does... smuggling ring have to do the... with anything? What? Rose picks up a nearby, newly finished basket. With a small pop, she removes the black sheet of wood at the bottom of the basket, revealing a small letter written in glyph, so Dave could neither recognize nor attempt to decipher. This art is amazing. Why can't I do that? been maintaining correspondence with a handful of rather influential individuals. When were you planning on letting me in on all this? So it is a smuggling ring! As soon as it became relevant, as it just did. <coughs> Rose watches the sheet of wood back in place. Slowly but surely, we'll get to the bottom of this. Oh my god. This mystery is turning us into real basket cases. Oh my god, the pun. Indeed. Stumbled upon a very intricate means. <laughs> They're just gonna. The victory of unraveling them will belong to whoever is quicker. <laughs> <laughs> now that I hate myself, I'm gonna head home. It's been a long day. So is that the end? Of the... No, it's not. Dave ensures he's far and buffed out. Rose is not excited before landing on his own branch, pulling himself up against the bark with one hand. Up his nose with the other. He sits in the crook where the branch and tree trunk align. His shades uh, shift, and from beneath his lenses, he's given an untinted view of the jungle far below. A thick tangle of wood and leaves that build the ceiling into a lower layer. Beneath the ceiling is the understory. Beneath 
the understory, a mask gray, worried thoughts and dragging along in the inside of his mind, continuous and heavy, cranking and clicking like rusted cogs in a machine with no purpose. The air carries a quiet ambience, but the silence that brings him no comfort. To be continued. Okay, that is the end of that is the end of Dave's story in this part. And it was actually amazing. I actually enjoyed this one. I can't wait to start up Car Cats in the next episode. And where are artwork? Okay. Anyways. People, this is just a, an amazing thing. And I hope to... Uh, and I can't wait for the next chapter of it to come out. I know in the... Uh, I know we still have half of this uh, chapter to do, but I still can't wait for the next chapter. I mean, Featherbent is amazing. It's got amazing music, it's got great voice acting, it's got amazing art. It's just great. And anyway, alright, so until next time, go check out my uh, Pokemon Sweet Nuzlocke uh, uh, between these videos. Uh, so it's updated every other day, just like this. And I will see you next time. Comment, like, and subscribe. And until next time.